Hello everyone, my name is Xin Liu. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Texas at Arlington. So the work I present here is an extension of my PhD study with Dr. Wen Bing Yu at Purdue University. In the past two years, we have been working on multi-scale modeling with the help of AN models and generated several journal and conference papers. Today, I'd like to give a short review of the artificial neural networks in the modeling of composite materials and structures. So artificial neural networks, or in short, AN models, have been increasingly used for the modeling of composite materials and structures. This figure shows the number of papers with neural network as keyword in some popular journals in composites. Clearly, we can see an increasing trend of using neural network models in composites. Despite fast-growing research in AN model, the application of the AN models in some difficult composite problems are still very limited. So what are the real benefits we can obtain from the AN model, and how we can really benefit from the AN model? So in this talk, uh, I will focus on two topics in the modeling of composites, learning nonlinear constitutive laws and accelerate uh, multi-scale modeling. I will focus on the uh, current research works, uh, as well as the challenges and opportunities. So accurate model the constitutive behaviors of composites, especially for the nonlinear behavior, is very challenging. The nonlinear behaviors of composites are often governed by several failure mechanisms simultaneously. This is very hard to develop a physics-based model that can capture all these behaviors. In addition, with the increasing complexity of the microstructures of advanced materials, such as 3D textile composites or metamaterials, we usually don't have a good understanding of the underlying physics during the failure. However, we can still perform experiments, experiments and we want to apply AN, ANN to the data to discover the unknown physics that has not been discovered or even cannot be discovered by human beings. For this kind of problems, the data must be obtained from experiments, experiments or at least the visible. Dr. Gatsby and his co-workers did the very early work back to the 90s, a very important contribution is to make use of a load deflection curve from structure tests to create strain and stress. What we can obtain usually from the experiments are the force and the displacement. In general, we cannot directly obtain a stress. And it is very difficult to derive 2D or 3D stress directly from the load deflection curve in a complex experiment. So this only work make use of finite element model to create a connection from the structural responses and constitutive laws. However, this approach still relies on paired data, meaning that the strain and stress must be obtained from structural responses. And this is a very strong limitation that heightens the uh, approach from more complex composites and stress states. Other researchers recently did some work to use indirect data measurable from experiments to train a model to learn 2D stress and strain and stress relation. However, there are still several challenges. Still, we usually don't have enough data from experiments for the 2D and the 3D stress. The AN models rely on directly paired data, and usually uh, we cannot make a good use of the data from complex experimental tests. So one uh, opportunity is to combine the AN model with the physics, physical models. So this is the common approach. The AN input and output either directly obtained from experiments or can be simply derived from experiments. This is why the AN discovered Constitutive laws often use data from simple setting experiments. If we can make use of the physics-based model, actually we can potentially make the data from complex experiments. And for example, the N output may go to another physics-based model to predict some values that can be measured from experiments. In this way, first we can extend the data availability. Second, we implicitly force the physical constraints in the model, and this would be the hard constraints. 
Third, it enables us to solve more complex problems, such as the multi-scale modeling problems. For example, we can learn the in interface constitutive laws based on the measurable data from coupon tests. There are still some, there are uh, already some works in this direction. And uh, note that in, the uh, in this table, the real input and output of the N models are not measurable. So another important application of AN models is multi-scale modeling. In fact, most AN models in the current literature are developed for accelerating multi-scale modeling in a broader sense. In general, the uh, more ha a, a micro-scale model is used to represent the constitutive behavior of a material point at the cost scale. Nonlinear analysis will be performed at the micro scale for each material point at the cost scale in each step. Clearly, this computational cost is impractical for the real engineering design and analysis of composite structures. Therefore, AN models are used to replace the micro scale modeling, and the AN models will be trained based on the data from a series of offline simulations at the micro scale. Such models have been developed for different constitutive behaviors, such as elastoplastic, viscoplastic, hyperelastic, damage, and the traction separation laws. In general, the N accelerated modeling can be summarized in three major steps. First, obtain data. Generate data from a series of subscale modeling. And then, train the model. Uh, some Pre-processing needs to be done for the training data, and we need to tune the hyperparameters to get a better uh, surrogate model, and then uh, check the results. And the third step is to implement the trained model into the uh, finite element software, usually through a user-defined subroutine. So the major challenge is still the computational cost from simulations. Because generating the high fidelity simulation data is very expensive for complex nonlinear behaviors, in addition to strings, other inputs such as the state variables or even the microstructure features could also be used as input. Therefore, the N models are dealing with a high dimensional input and output, which requires a huge amount of training data. There are several ongoing research works that may help reduce this issue. First, developing more efficient multi-scale modeling servers. Some of them have been shown a great reduction of computing time while maintains accurate results. Physics informed the neural networks have been recently introduced. One of the benefits is actually to reduce the required training data size while keeping the same accuracy. Using reduced order models to generate data for training will, pro will provide a great computational efficiency. We may also want to combine the data from, uh, from high fidelity and not very high fidelity models, which is actually the multi-fidelity model. Of course, we can implement the ad more advanced AN models, such as the convolutional neural network, recurrent neural network, or a combination. So a quick summary, I talked about two challenge problems in modeling of composite materials and structures. Namely, learn nonlinear constitutive laws and accelerate multi-scale modeling. In short, one feasible way to handle current challenges is to couple AN models with different elements and uh, information from physics, data science, and experiments. This will form a hybrid system to fully make use of potentials from different fields. Some recent directions that may be of your interest, first, multi-scale inverse modeling of nonlinear constitutive laws, which will enable learning constitutive, be, constitutive behaviors based on the coupon and structure tests. Second, generate data in a more efficient way or reduce the data set to lower the computational cost. Third, bring physics into AI models and add physical interpretability. Models such as physics-informed, constrained, or guided AI models will be great helpful. Last, last but not least, AI models also have a great potential in manufacturing simulations of composites. I also listed the reference I used in this presentation, just for your in case you are interested. 
with this, I will end my presentation and thank you.